Sonica, Alex, Coach, many names. <laughs> Welcome back to Denmark. Thank you very much. How come you are you're in Denmark right now? Actually, to be honest, we want to see the mountains again. So we wanted to go to Austria, but then the kids interfered. And uh, Liva said, I want to go to Denmark. So we said, that's a good idea. So now we are here from, uh, from Friday on, and we will stay until next uh, Wednesday, visiting some of our marvelous neighbors in Birkewey, um, yeah, having the interview with you. Uh, meeting some of the of the people also in, in Copenhagen. How is it to be back? Wonderful, a lot of memories, a lot of memories. We passed the stadium. Unfortunately, there's no training, there are no games right now, of course, but it's it's marvelous. Uh, when we were just entering the, the ferry from Puttgarden to Rugby, um, it was already a feeling like a little bit coming home. Yeah, you're back now, but uh, after you left uh, Brunke, you, you actually stayed in Denmark for, for two and a, two, two and and a half, half years. years. Yeah. Why? Yeah, you know, we, we so far we didn't already decide it where will be our home uh, home base in, in in Germany or will we stay abroad or there are a couple of reasons. Um, Germany is a strange country right now. It's our home country, my home country, but we didn't decide it to to stay in Stuttgart, my home place, or or close to close to Lipsia where Christina and, and, and myself met. So um, it wouldn't have made sense to move somewhere else just to move maybe three, four, five months, weeks, whatever later to another place. And um, I think everybody knows that we are not totally unhappy in, in Denmark. Uh, Christina loved it as well. So uh, we decided to stay here as long as, um, as um, there's a new job. And also uh, the kids felt, um, felt uh, really home in, in Denmark. They are both, both born in, in Denmark and in Sørestrand and yeah, no reason. And um I, I, I know you have said earlier that you were kind of surprised actually that no other Danish clubs in that time came and, yeah, and was, asked you. Yeah, it was a little bit funny also, yeah, because uh, I mean, I was not completely uh, uh, unsuccessful, uh, mm -hmm. even though we fucked up the, the, the championship 17-18. But I think uh, the way we were playing, the way we were changing a few things also in Danish football, um, Left the, left the footprint and, and uh, so I was, I was just talking to Truisbeck and, and uh, he was also asking me if there was a club and I said no, I don't know why, but maybe I was too major or uh, uh, clubs were afraid that, that, uh, that, I will, that I will mix up too many things, which I do not. Yeah, there are a couple of stories. Whenever I'm entering, when I, when I was entering Brøndby, I remember um, I, I talked with Christian Nörgaard, yeah, there were really some interesting stories about myself. So it's like, uh, how do you say, silent, silent, uh, silent male when you're telling somebody and he's telling somebody and he's telling somebody and at the end it's a nightmare. But I think, um, I don't know, they, or of course the other possibility, uh, which is not my first choice in my mind, is that they found uh, better guys than me. <laughs> <laughs> that could be also a, reg a regular choice. But but do you, do you think you could have done it? Because I remember that feeling in the years after that I wouldn't be able to bear to see you in another Yeah, it was club. almost impossible. Yeah, yeah. From a sports point of view, um, I, I, I trained the, the, from a sports point of view, one of the top clubs in, in Denmark. Um, it would have been easy to, to keep the same level. There was only FCK, very difficult at that time very difficult in general. Um, Michelin uh, the same, uh, so especially with no break in between and uh, all the other clubs would have been would have been difficult as well. I was just I was just uh, wondering that not uh, one of the clubs who said well he's now one year out of job, one and a half year out of job, still living in, in, in Denmark, let's try it. Uh, yeah, that's why some of us were afraid that no, oh, nobody maybe. had to be afraid. Could you do it, I think? No, um, now? At the, you know we love Denmark, yeah. but um, it will be difficult. Uh, it will be it will be the same way difficult in Cyprus now, uh, coaching another another team than Apollon, um, and and the same with with Trentby. Yeah, there were so many emotions when I just remember how uh, the number of of of, um, of messages we received after they fired me and also after we left uh, we left Denmark almost impossible. Mm. And um, were there other offers, like before you decided to go to, to Cyprus, uh, were there other offers you were, you were thinking about? Yeah, of about? course. Uh, I, had a, I also had a, 
a not totally unsuccessful past in my CV. So there were clubs from, um, we were also in negotiations with, with uh, three clubs in England, uh, Netherlands, Austria, Swiss, um, America, close to signing a contract there in America. That could have been interesting as well, especially because of the age of the kids right now also. Yes. Germany, of course. Um, yeah, it was, th there was some traffic yeah. always. So that was also the reason why I was not like, oh, now it can be difficult. Yeah, it was, um, it was the right time. And it was quite clear we were looking for the right task, not, for the, not necessarily for the right country, for other people or for, it was the, more or less the same reason why I, why I moved to, to Brøndby in 2015. Mm. Yeah in 2016 yeah. um, because it, it felt like it's the right club with the, with the right acting people that's even more important at the, at the right time. But living in Denmark, uh, even though you were not a coach at Brøndby anymore, you still came to the games, or some games in some Brøndby games. Stadium. Yeah, some games. Some games, yeah. But, um, not can, you, can you explain, because it's not something that you see very often, this a fire yeah, coach still I, coming to the... Yeah, but I knew that uh, most likely the, the fans will not kick me out of the stadium when, when I show up there. Yeah, I knew, knew that, there is a, that there's a sympathy, a sympathy to, the, to my person. And um, from time to time, I, I just enjoyed watching a football game, especially in the times uh, when my boys was, were still playing. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was um, one time, only one time in... The year after Hani, um, Dome, uh, Bene left, um, but yeah, that was that was the only reason that I that I wanted to see football games and that I that I saw no problem in, in coming to the stadium to to Pointe. But can you understand that people think it's like a good sign of also that no bonds are broken, you know? Uh, yeah, of course. Whenever you got, whenever you got fired, kicked, yeah. there are bonds broken. Yeah. Yeah, but not the the bonds who were decisive for the for the players or for the for the fans, of course. Could you imagine coming back as a coach? Uh, for Brøndby, mm -hmm. uh, that is always a big part uh, of, of our life in general. But um, also, you know, there 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 are times in life when you are at the right spot at the right time, and that was. That was happening in 2016 when when Trolls brought me to the to the club. Mm. Um, we had our we had our time, and uh, it will be difficult to repeat all these emotions and all these. There was something new, and there was a new sheriff in town, and the fight uh, the fights with with Stole and with uh, with uh, FCO uh, and with also with Yes uh, uh, Toro. Um, so no, so FCO fans. Be quiet. Most likely, I will not return. <laughs> yeah, and then you went to Apollon. Is it the right? Yep. Yeah. Um, can you take us through your time there? Because you've been there one year. Yes. Very successful. One successful. Yeah, yeah. Very. Yeah, yeah. Um, you won the was, championship. Was, yeah? yeah, but there was also a time at the beginning which was uh, really tough. Um, the, actually, they wanted me. I think in September 2019, maybe. Um, but it, at that time, it was no option for me. First of all, to start at a at a South European or a club with with these clim uh, climatical um, situation in general during the season without a preseason, you know that our game is very physically. Yeah, I need to know what are the players able to to do and what not. So. Um, uh, we, we did not went to 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 Apollon at that time, but two, one and a half year later they asked again, um, and they really invested a lot in everything. Uh, they it was Corona time, so we couldn't meet, but um, the the decisive guys uh, Nikos Kirsis, the, the the owner and the president, and also Petros Konafis, the the sports director. The, we had a couple of very good talks, and I really felt like they really know what I'm standing for and they really want me. In detail, you always know what somebody is standing for only when you work with them together. Uh, and that, that's what we find, uh, find out afterwards because the first weeks were tough. We still had Corona circumstances and um, 
Um, we couldn't go to Austria, we played only two friendly matches, then we moved immediately into Q2, I guess, in Conference League against a very well organized, very fast um, team from Silina. Could have been coached by myself, yeah, I, I really liked the way they were playing and, we've, and we missed it. Yeah, we, we went out of the tournament and in, in, in Cyprus they are in a positive way, very emotional, but they are also very black and white and that made it very difficult at the beginning. Mm. Yeah. So we had our fights also at the beginning already, we changed a few things, I learned a lot about myself, what I'm able to change even though I have a clear plan for the sake of the, of the team and of the success. And um, that's what we did and then we started really well in, in, the, in the league, we won the first games, like in Point B as well at that time. We, we lost two and then we won another four or five, so we were constantly on, on top position. At the end, I think we were on first position in 27, 28 game days from 34, uh, 32 game, uh, game days. So it was successful. We were on top position uh, when we went into the, into the champions round with seven points ahead. But um, Apollon had a, has a, 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 big, uh, a history of, of giving up things in the, in the last game days. So people were so afraid of losing something, something, that it was a tough fight from the beginning to implement that we have to win something. Because if you don't have the championship, you cannot lose it. Yeah. You can just win it. And that, is, that was a tough fight from the beginning and a permanent fight. Uh, the, the boys did it well, but it was a permanent fight with everybody that no, not just because we, we lost now a game or two games or we didn't won for five, six, seven. At the end, it was nine games. Um, we will lose automatically the, the, champion, uh, the championship. Mm. Uh, and there you, 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 f you felt that, uh, that some of the people around, the fans as well, they become a little bit shaky, but um, uh, at the end they supported us. Yeah? There, there was also a, a thing with a, the with a fan card that you are only allowed to come into the stadium with a fan card and of course you know the Ultras don't like that, yeah? to give their data. So they supported us, but not inside the stadium for a very long period. When we went into the Champions Round, they decided to support us also in the stadium. And that was also a game changer. Mm. Uh, the, the power, it's not the, the many fans like in, like in, in Süßen, for example, but it's, they have such an energy mm. uh, with um, a, a natural understanding of Pyro. <laughs> um, so it was really, I, I mean, I, I'm quite sure you saw some of the videos oh, yes. uh, afterwards. <laughs> It was, um, yeah, it was outstanding. Uh, and so we, 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 uh, we had a, a, a loss, one, only one last game in, in, the, in the Champions round um, until the, 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 uh, the situation was decided. And we lost this game and the people thought that's it. Mm. Uh, that's, now we fucked it up again. Uh, and um, uh, we did not because also Apoel, our toughest competitor, didn't want the games, even though they had a really strong, uh, really strong team. Uh, but they thought it would be automatically, and we simply had the better team. Uh, they had the better individual players. We had the better team, and that was the decisive factor uh, at the end. We beat them in the, on the third last game day. Not like years before against Michelin, uh, where we lost uh, on game day. Um, I think it was the fourth last game day uh, or third last. Now we. Now we won and we were four points ahead, two games to go. And then we decided against Aris. Um, yeah, and that was, the, that was the winner. And then the whole stadium exploded. The people were moving on the, on, on the pitch. We, uh, we were traveling. There's a big uh, roundabout where successful teams from Limassol in general uh, meet up. And it was, you couldn't see it, the end of the, of the people. Uh, it's, it was unbelievable. After that, a week party, I told the, my boys um, I would be very disappointed if somebody will not be drunken in the next four, four days, except of the coach and two guys who are not drinking alcohol. But I think they handled it quite well. Yeah. Uh, some of the guys were not able to talk when they <laughs> returned after three, uh, three days. How was it for you, personally, this uh, success of winning the championship? Actually, I, I thought shortly about uh, the Miss Championship uh, with, with Point B because um, Myself, as well as the club and the fans and the players, should have had one national championship more. So it was, of course, emotional, uh, but also it was not so emotional like I thought. I thought I would start crying immediately mm -hmm. and, uh, and um, smash on the, on the floor. It was not like that because there were immediately too many people. 
but of course it was we, under all these circumstances yeah the the president was totally uh, excited the, the sports director as well they had a tough time before the players the fans um, it was it was you cannot describe it you know I'm usually I'm not so much in social media as uh, as you know yeah, not so much like Steve, Steve Tufty yeah. but um, um, I, 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 I posted some 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 videos and some pictures on, on WhatsApp on my WhatsApp uh, account and after a while I thought I, I was asking myself Alex if, if you would read these these pictures and if you would see you would you would tell yourself now it's enough yeah, because you cannot, if you're not in the situation, you cannot really feel what, what had happened there. And it was, it was a lot. Yeah, the, the party afterwards, um, after the last game day when we got the trophy, then traveling with an open bus through Limassol with people all over. You couldn't even enter the, the city. There were tens and hundreds of thousands. So it was really intensive. Yeah, because it was many years ago. How many? Was it 18 years since? Eight. Uh, 16. 16 years yeah. since uh, the club won a championship. That's right. And always yeah. with German coaches. Uh -huh. They won uh, four championships um, with three German coaches. So that's, yeah, that's also what they, <laughs> what they told me from the beginning. Yeah. I said, well, okay. Wow. Um, how has it been for you to see um, some of your boys, like Christian Nergo? I know you were not happy with him moving to Fiorentina at the I time. I was happy with him I was not happy with other guys huh? around him and also with with some of our decisive guys yeah. but it's football but it's um, uh, I, I always had a I, I visited uh, Chris in, mm -hmm. in, in uh, Fiorenze um, in the in spring uh, 19 I guess so everything is fine between me and the uh, and the players uh, I, yeah. I made Regarding uh, uh, at the end of a, of a player, um, I made only one mistake with, with Timo when I tried to convince him to stay here with not the right words um, in, a, in a public surrounding. That was the only, the only thing. All the other things were, were okay for me. Uh, the, that, that, we, that we lost them, that, that Frederick was leaving, that uh, Frederick Renault was leaving, that Timo was leaving, was, was, was quite sure. Um, Johan wanted to, to, to try something different. But of course, the, the moving of, of, of um, Christian was, was first of all not planned, and first of all, it was, it, it was, it was impossible to replace it. Uh, impossible, not difficult. It was impossible, and that's what actually we all agreed. But in football, sometimes things are changing. Yeah, how has it been for you to see some of them? You have been like forming them. Uh, Frantrop also now be successful in. In foreign clubs. Yeah, I was not forming him. I was. Uh, that was the the colleague afterwards, or the or the player himself mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think Morden was. Uh, I said it before. That, that I would have taken a player like him to every place in the world because his mentality is outstanding. I remember we took him with 16 years into a training camp to Dubai. We were facing a, a Chinese team with all these Chinese ath athletes, um, and he smashed one of the of the guys outside the pitch so he tackled him out and immediately four or five of these 195 guys were standing around him and he was looking <laughs> like, like this and Hani moved into the situation and he said he's only 16 <laughs> <laughs> and this is he didn't care uh, he was just he had this mentality from the first uh, game day on if if a couple of more of the young guys would have had this mentality of, of modern um, we never would have had a situation that I didn't use the, a, a Danish player in a, um, in a in a match for Brøndby uh, the, um, also the development of, uh, of, of Joppe, yeah, marvelous, uh, even though he also had a tough time when, when, he, when he showed up. But I said it before, these players have to make a decision for, for themselves. Mm. Uh, and when they make the decision, then sometimes they can show their, their real qualities. Uh, but my guys are definitely guys like, uh, like uh, Ento Yusaka, like um, Chris Lurgard, uh, like Lebo Piri. Uh, Bene, of course, Hani, of course, yeah, we are still in touch. Um, uh, Frederick, mostly um, uh, related to, uh, to Lars, of course. Um, Tony. Tony Jung, yeah, but Tony was also, if he would have listened more closely to me earlier, he would have had um, 150 more Bundesliga games. Yeah, <laughs> it was unnecessary that he didn't win the straightway. But Tony always thought that he knows what's good for him. Yeah. And of course, always the player does, but he, he missed time. Yeah. 
but also uh, Sven Krone. Yeah, the, um, I was very happy when I received the message after they fired me from from uh, Gregor Jakobsen. Yeah, so um, uh, Jonas Boring, yeah, all these guys who started with us uh, uh, together, most of them. Yeah, yeah. That was a that was an intensive way, and I'm I'm always happy when they are when they are riding. Also. Um Michael Uhr went on actually yeah. to become a top scorer in the in the yeah. Superliga. What do you think of his development? Because he was actually, mostly to be truth, I didn't thought that it would go that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, he he was always a player with uh, who needed this self confidence. Uh, he's, he was a physical player. The playing style fits a little bit more into in, in, in to his strength. Um, yeah, uh, I'm happy for for him as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy from the, the manager from sports director from um, uh, Philadelphia called me before yeah. they signed him and I couldn't say something negative about him. Mm. Did he did they call you from uh, Genoa also about Frontoff? No, even but though you know they, even though his yeah. his head coach is yeah. um, I was playing with him and was um, uh, one of my best friends. Mm. Yeah, we were we are facing them now in the, most likely in the preseason ah. in Austria. Well, wow, that's yeah. funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm then we will see if Morden will play right back, left back, or he should play six. Yeah, he should play six. I was also a little bit surprised mm. that he played in the under 21 on the on, on the left fullback. Yeah, his strength is definitely he's the, he wants to be decisive. Mm. He's, but I'm not his coach. Yeah, yeah. Maybe someday. Maybe someday again. If you look back now, Alex, on the time in Brumby and where you are in your life now, both as a as a person but also as a coach. Um, are you still the same, completely the same person? No, Denmark, Brøndby, um, everything changed my life and our life. Yeah. I came as a, as, as a guy with a, with a girlfriend at that time, with a wonderful girlfriend and now it's a, it's a wonderful um, wife and, um, and mother of, of two kids, both born in, in Roskilde. So, uh, Life has changed a lot, yeah. even though we will enjoy that we are going from here to Warnemünde into a hotel, just Christina and myself, because all the couples will, will know what I'm talking about <laughs> from time to time. You are happy when the kids are with the grandparents. <laughs> it's the same with us. Um, but of course, it, 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 it changed my understanding of what is possible and how much do you have to decide and how much should be decided by other people around you. Yeah, Trolls was for sure uh, somebody I, I I could always trust, and and uh, I think I think we created something, even though the end was not uh, was not like we all wished. Um, the the players developed me in the same way, uh, like I developed the players. And then another step in in in, in Cyprus, uh, the people in. Again, in our neighbors in the Birkevai and, and uh, the people in general, I remember there were so many also FC Co fans who showed me their respect of, of what we did at, at, uh, at that time. Because I think, even though sometimes we were joking, it was never like, for me, like FC Co against, uh, against Brøndby. It was more like, how can we develop Brøndby in the best possible way, no matter what FC Co is doing or what Michelin is doing. Yeah, so we were very much focused on ourselves. Um, again, when I left, uh, a father wrote me, when I was young, I was in the, in the 90s, I was in, in, in Süßüden as well. And I, I felt this intensity and this, and this uh, empathy um, from all the other peoples as well. And I was never able to explain it to my son, because when I took him in, um, in the stadium in the last 10, uh, 12 years, um, the feeling was never the same. And you enabled me to explain my son why I fell in love with this uh, with this club mm. and that was one of the one of the biggest honors I ever received yeah, that I felt at the end how much it meant for the for the people what we created at that time with Brunby. Yeah because we can still get together as Brunby fans and talk about all the there's so many games in that especially the 17 18 season that you could still pick out and say it's taken from I remember the the game uh, away against uh, Michelin, actually there were two of them, but, but, but the 3-2 game over there, Tony scoring for the first time, yeah. <laughs> and 
There's the derby, of course, with Hani's yeah. goal. And also the 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 one zero in at, at that year in, in Michelin when when Casper Fisker, yes. one of these other marvelous uh, guys, uh, I was still in touch with, when he scored the the goal with being in a position he can never be because of his sprinting qualities. He was there because of his mentality. Mm. And of course the the seven zero. The se was it seven zero yeah, yeah. against in Aarhus? Aarhus. Yeah. When they were throwing the shoes afterwards, <laughs> somebody needed to explain it to me. Yeah. So they were the start of, of the whole project with the with the with the win in, in two games against Edinburgh yeah, when we had the the small camp also in Edinburgh beating afterwards uh, had a had a BST Berlin, 1,500 people in in in, um, in Berlin yeah, marching towards the stadium. There was. There were so, so many games, mm. uh, but you're right, 17-18 was outstanding, I think. Two victories against FCK in the last minutes, beating them in the, in, in the, cup, um, in the cup as well. Uh, but of course, at the end, we, we lost a decisive game against Michelin. Uh, beating them four times, but lost a decisive one. Winning the cup, yes, but that's what I felt now as well. Because we had only four, three or four days to the next game. We couldn't even celebrate the cup. Yeah. Yeah, the first trophy after I think ten years, and we couldn't even celebrate it. Yeah, but and um, uh, because everybody was expecting, there was one guy with a tattoo on his arm or something with Dubel 2018. Yeah. So there were so many stories, and also uh, the little uh, Elvis, you know, the guy who was moving inside. I, I met him on the on the uh, last day before I was I was moving to, and it was really heartbreaking yeah, because. I still have a, I still have an album my wife created for me, a small one. I took it to the games, um, and there's a picture for me and Elvis. And whenever I feel like this can be really difficult now, I'm just looking in the in the album, uh, and it's uh, the, these guys are the really tough guys. But doesn't it, it must be special to have, you know, because even though the last championship, and we all be hurting for that forever, no doubt. But to still have left such an impact that people remember this period as something, wow, that was ama an amazing time, you know? Yeah, no doubt. And I think it was all also, I mean, um, Thomas Frank had an influence on, 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 on the playing style of some of the players. I, I wouldn't say of the, of the playing style in, in, in general. But we changed something when we arrived yeah? and people felt that and people felt this is Brøndby again, yeah? how, we, how we felt Brøndby should, should look like. Um, so um, it was it was tough horses, and, and it, uh, nobody of us will ever forget it. But we are so much connected, maybe because of horses. Yeah. Also because that if you continue, you can reach your goals. Yeah. No matter how long it will take, and it's the same now with Apollon. Yeah. So it's of course. Yeah. We are there. There will be for the rest of my days. Yeah. I will be connected with this club. Yeah. One of the best memories, actually, and, and was was the cup final for me in two, the first one. Yeah. Uh, the derby, yeah. because we played so well, yeah. but I was so proud even though we lost. I remember that pride, even though I was crying, yeah. but I was so proud. That yeah. was a special moment for me actually, because that, what, that was when, when, I, when I thought, okay, this, yeah. this could be We big. had a, a couple of, of tough games against them already, and I remember, I think it was the, a game shortly prior to the, to the cup match where I felt we are in their heads. Uh, they know that we can hurt them. And then we had this 1-1 one, one from Hani or Temo. I think the ball was already in the goal. Oh, they hit the crossbar. If we had VAR, I think it yeah. was Hani's goal. Yeah. Um, and then we had, I think, another big goal chance. But then Cornelius uh, he scored again. Uh, Bene uh, made a marvelous season. But in that situation, uh, Cornelius, the, the individual quality, Santander, they were really, really... Del was Delaney still playing or was he... I think he left in winter, right? Yeah. To Germany. So they had really an outstanding team at that time, but we were really challenging them. And it was, I mean, in the final, I'm not so much interested in, 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 the, in the performance or I, I can't be proud just because of the performance. But I think this, this game also had an impact for the next season uh, because also Christian Nörgaard said, we are not driving nowhere now anymore just to, to be there, just to try something. Uh, we want to win everywhere and that is also I think there was, there was no team 10 years before and most likely 20 years after with the number of points who wouldn't have become champion. Yeah. But it's football. Yeah, I think a couple of years later, 
they won they won the trophy with uh, I think uh, three points more than we had after the regular season. Yeah. So it's it's football. How was it for you to see Bambi champions again? Tough. Last year. Tough. Tough. Because I said it before, yeah. It's, so it's not a secret. I think we deserved it more. Uh, but of course, when you are at the end champion, you deserve it. Yeah, when you are not making enough points, when you are winning a decisive game, then you then you don't de deserve it. Yeah, I said it also to the fans. I think we were not able to play a better season than 2000, uh, 2017 and 18 throughout the, the regular season and most of the games. But we could have played four better games. I think the same situation like now in Apollon. If we would have been in this situation with winning something before, we would have we would have fixed the, the championship as well. But there you felt the first time the, it started already against Silkeborg, then against FCCO, the 1-1 one, one there, um, uh, Michelin as well. Um, we wanted to win this game instead of just keeping cool, taking the three points lead in the, in the last two games and, and finish it in, in there. Um, but uh, the, the team was not as convinced anymore as, as throughout the complete season before. But it was just, it was a group of marvelous, marvelous uh, young boys and, and also staff members and coaches, I think, as well. It, it fits, it fitted together at that time. Yeah, but it was still many of your boys, actually, winning the championship. So. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, some of the players who were not in front row, but um, there you saw the quality of, of a Christian Nergard, of a, of a Hani Mukta, uh, that was outstanding. Um, but the defense, I, th I think Maxe was, was in the defense. All the other guys were still the guys from the from us. Uh, Bruce Marvin was playing on the on the on the right. Marvin in goal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on the left, Tony. Um, um, Jotur. Jotur was playing as well. Then on the on the six Josip. also Josip Radosevic. Uh, um, of course, Jobe was playing more. Up in front, Hedlund. We, we brought him in the in the winter break. With with Ure, um, Bruce was playing on the on the right fullback as I remember. And Kevin Mensa. Kevin Mensa. Yeah. What is he doing? He's um, the ah. knee again. Okay. Same injury. Too bad for him. Yeah. Um, Alex, uh, soon I have no more questions for you. But um, do you have a message for for the Brumby fans? Now we have a direct pipeline here. <laughs> <laughs> For them, and you're not yeah. on social media, so. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, of course. Uh, I mean, uh, we said it now a couple of times. Uh, everybody knows about my my connection to the to the club and to the country and to the to the fans as well. Uh, it was, as I said, a, a, a marvelous time. You supported uh, us and uh, and also the, the the teams afterwards in the best possible way. Uh, um, I was so happy to see you going to Europe, also in in the group stages, um, even though uh, you lost the, the playoffs against a very good team with Matze Eisle <laughs> as a head coach. Um, this is football, uh, but um, I'm, I'm keeping the fingers crossed that you will stay on that level. You have a, 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 a marvelous sports director right now. Um, I, I keep the fingers crossed for the complete club that you're going in the, in, in the same direction and that you will still be successful in whatever way you, you analyze success for yourself. Last question, will we see you soon uh, back in the stadium if, if the calendar fits sometime? Yeah, you know, it's not like um, uh, training Saturday morning with, with, uh, with Apollon and then uh, <laughs> going in the plane and, and watching a, a game on Sunday morning and, and going back again. So whenever it fits, whenever, <laughs> whenever I'm in the, in the stadium, like also, I would have loved to see now a game from, from the national team, but they are, they are having all their games away. But um, uh, for sure, one day I will. Somebody will see me in the in in the sta in the stadium uh, again. Yeah, and we got a new shirt for you. Yes. You can wear that next time. Yes. Yeah. I think it was my size when I left the club. It's not <laughs> anymore my size, most likely. Sorry, it's not. Uh, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the one no, extra one I had. But I but I followed also, of course, these these actions also th uh, during the the Corona um, situation. I still have. Two shirts at home, I guess. Uh, there were these special editions, one from um, from Faxe and one from who was the Info. other one? From Kim. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He signed me. I got the original in the package. Huh? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I met also some of the legends when when I was there. Awesome.
Alex, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to, to do this. It was and, a pleasure. Uh, good luck uh, in the in Europe also in the Champions League. Thank you. And, uh, in the in the next season. Thank Cyprus. you. Thank you. Maybe we are facing FCK in, in in the playoffs. If we make it through the Q3, there's a possibility to face uh, FCK. So I expect all the Brøndby fans in Parkenden. I'm sure many people will come. I'm quite sure as well. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you very much.